Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina and welcome to Miami. Two questions. Have you ever had a problem when you're translating everything in your head from your language into English? And question number two, do you ever wish you could think in English? If you answered yes, watch this video up to the very end because I'm gonna share the tips that help me start thinking in English. Let's do it and enjoy Miami in the background. First of all, let me tell you my favorite story. When I was 14, I won a competition to come to the UK from my school to stay with a local family. I was 14, I thought I was advanced in English. My first shock was when I uh, was crossing the border and the guy asked me something in British accent. I was like, ah, huh? sorry? So I couldn't really understand what he was asking. He was asking something super basic, like why did you come to Great Britain? But my second shock was when I woke up, 14 years old, woke up in the morning and people started speaking English to me. You know, when you wake up in the morning, your brain is like, what's going on? Where am I? New country, new everything. And then people start speaking English to you. And my host mother asked me, Marina, what do you want for breakfast? Very basic question, but my brain was, blank like I couldn't remember a single word in English because it was in the morning because I was shocked and I was like I am not used to speaking English in the morning but the thing is when you're 14 years old your brain is really adaptive and in two weeks and I was 14 years old 2004 no Skype no internet no nothing I was completely immersed in English by the end of my second week I was dreaming in English and when I came back I told this story to students at my school and they were like, Marina, you have to share those tips. Here they are in this video. The first tip is actually one of the most important things you can do as an English language learner. When you see an object or a person, name them in English. What's going on right there? It's a concert. Someone is singing. And you see, the problem is when we learn English at school, they tell us backpack and then they say a word in your language, which refers to backpack. So you're not learning the concept, you're learning translation. And this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna translate everything in your head. So what's gonna happen from now on, you're gonna kind of reteach yourself. You're gonna do things, you're gonna see objects and you're gonna name them in English without even translating in your head. So you're gonna talk to yourself. I am walking, I'm in Miami, I'm on vacation. That guy is singing opera. You're not translating, you are giving English language labels to your everyday objects and actions and once you get used to naming objects in English then you're gonna start talking to yourself and some people are gonna tell you you're crazy you're crazy but this was a game changer for me when I started speaking to myself in English like I came back from school and I hated some person and I would be like talking to myself about that person in English just giving you some Miami vibes meditation you're gonna learn english you're gonna come here and you're gonna enjoy this place oh my god it's one of the it's the first place i visited in the u.s and uh wow rings means a lot to me this is where i was like okay i need to move here this is an incredible place i hope you're getting these vibes as well one of the best things you can do in English, and it's great in terms of motivation and also great in terms of learning. Start using English as an instrument to reach your goals. And by this, I mean, instead of watching a class purely about English, watch a class about things that interest you. For example, I always take courses. The recent course I took was about videos. I took a course on productivity. I took a course on economics, like all of that stuff that interests you start learning about this in English because you're gonna learn concepts right away. When you're taking a course in English, they're not gonna translate from your language. They're gonna be like, oh, this concept, you know, investing in stocks, let's talk about a stock. What is a stock? It's a piece of company that you can own, blah, blah, blah. 
So this is the way you learn in English. And once you start learning English as an instrument, you would be able to learn concepts right away. And this is a way to start thinking in English. The platform to take courses from native speakers is called Skillshare. I have a long history with Skillshare. I've been using them myself a lot. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and new skills. Skillshare is one of the best platforms to take classes from native speakers and I've been using it a lot. There are so many different classes there and they let you explore any topic. As I mentioned, productivity, IT, design, photography, web design, Whatever you want to explore, you will be able to find a course. One of the courses that I wanted to recommend is by a fellow creator, Thomas Frank. So I'm super passionate about English and I can talk about English, I can explore different concepts every single day because I love it. He is passionate about productivity. He can explore productivity every single day and he put together classes that teach you how to build systems around productivity. Like how do you manage being a student, working part-time, learning English, getting married, having kids. He tackles this problem by creating his own systems and I highly, highly recommend learning from him. He's one of the most amazing creators I've ever met and he has put together classes for Skillshare. The first 1,000 people who use the link in the description are gonna get one month of free Skillshare trial. The link is down in the description. Another thing you could do is switch one of your daily routines into English. For example, what I love doing when I do yoga, I always use English speaking videos. So you just go to YouTube and type in, you know, 20 minute yoga or whatever. If you write lists like shopping lists, that's the best practice because sometimes there are words that we're so used to in our native language. We're like, oh, but what's that in English? Like laundry detergent or dishwasher detergent, like all of these words that we use almost daily, but we use them in our own language. When we do shopping lists, this is the way for you to learn how to say them in English. So your task right now is to choose one of the things you do regularly, like once in two days, every day, and switch them to English completely. Let's go. Oh, where's my phone? 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 See? talking to myself in English. Where is my phone? See, you go around your life. I'm pushing the button to get an elevator. I'm getting the elevator. My baby forgot her water gun. Now let's take a look at the first video I published on this channel. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share my story with you. The story about how I passed Teufel IBT. So you see, first of all, because I'm doing this regularly, when I see the camera, I can tell my brain like, hey, this is time to speak English. And my brain is like, okay, let's switch. Or I also vlog in Russian and I'll be like, it's time to speak Russian and my brain is switching. And the reason it's working is because I've been doing this for six years, almost every single day. When I first came to the US and I started talking to my immigrant friends, they told me, Marina, the day when you start switching between two languages, Russian and English, in your daily life without thinking, this is when you master thinking in English. Because yes, of course, you can spend two weeks in an English-speaking country without internet connection, without speaking in your own language, but then you go back to your home country and you forget the skill. The thing is, you need to create an environment for yourself that you do the switching every single day. I speak Russian to my family, to my kids, to my husband. Half of my team speaks Russian, but I also have Zoom calls in English. I have my American friends. I have you guys. And because I do this daily, switching from Russian into English, I think I've almost mastered it. So a piece of advice learning from all of this. I was a star a YouTube channel in English, but I know that not everyone wants to be in front of the camera. But I would say start some kind of blogging, some kind of social media in English. It could be TikTok, like super easy, like say a couple of phrases. Or it could be Instagram where you take photos and write captions, long captions. Long form YouTube videos are the best for English speaking practice. If you don't want to be in front of the camera, if you don't like social media, 
create a WhatsApp group with your friends and tell them like, guys, this is a WhatsApp group in English and we're going to discuss this and this topic, but it's only going to be in English and we're going to be discussing daily. And you could discuss through voice messages, through texting, something. And by doing this, you're going to learn two things. First, English, switching between languages. Second, by having a community where you talk about things that matter to you, you learn how to express your thoughts, you learn how to negotiate, you learn how to react when people criticize you. All of these skills are super important for your whole life. So there are three things that I believe in in this life. First of all, that everyone should learn English. Second, entrepreneurship is great and people should try and change lives by becoming entrepreneurs or helping entrepreneurs. And three is that everybody has to have some kind of community, a group of people who they talk to regularly because you learn so much from doing this. So please find a way to do it for yourself. When I lived in Russia, I loved using a technique called shadowing. So shadowing is a technique used to improve your English language pronunciation. It basically means that you select a person who you love, whose accent you adore, and you start repeating after them. You start watching more and more of their videos. You start borrowing some of their phrases. And yes, I mentioned this is for pronunciation, but because you're diving deeper into conversations, because you're diving deeper into what that person says, you start learning new words and you start getting used to thinking in English. One of the people I love shadowing slash learning new words is Gary Vee. A couple of examples, he loves saying the word audacity. And when you start following some people, you will realize they actually love using the same words over and over again. And this is the best way to learn these words. So find a person who you love, find a person with an accent that you love, because again, there is British, American, Canadian, find that person and start following them religiously. <laughs> and by following them religiously, I mean watching their videos at least once a day or once in two days and writing down things that you love, repeating after them. And when you're done with the initial list of phrases, go back to that person and create a new list of phrases that you want to shadow. So many of you guys who follow me already live in an English-speaking country and one of the things that I notice is that a lot of people come up to me and say like, hey, like for example, I live very close to a Russian community here in Miami and they're like, we only really speak to Russians all the time, how do we practice? And I notice that a lot of Americans, they like small talk. So whenever they come to a small coffee shop, they would ask people how they're doing, what's going on, how many tourists are here, try this. like. This requires more energy because when I try to do it, I'm like, I'm so tired today. I just really want my coffee and I want to go to the beach and that's it. But um, I noticed that a lot of people actually speak to almost everyone they meet and they're like, they take their time to learn about those people. Like, oh, how's it going here today? How many coffees have you served? Is that a busy day? Uh, what did you do yesterday when it was raining like crazy? This is a great way to practice. It's also a great way to develop the skill of how to make friends as you go. Like literally just buying coffee from someone and asking them how they're doing does so much for your language, for that person, and for your skills. Try that. I'm still learning. Like I'm learning from my American friends. I have some who are like really great at this. But I'm, you know, mo most of the times I'm like, I don't know. Should I talk to them? Should I not? Oh, yeah. They're amazing people. Thank you. Thank you so Good much. Time. Have a great day. Yes, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Guys, wanted to wrap up this video by saying that we talked about a lot of things that helped me. Other things might be helpful to you. Some things might not work for you. But the thing is, there are two key components to a successful studying process. First of all, stay excited. Think about how English is gonna help you succeed, how it's gonna help you consume content that you love. And second, stay consistent. Practice every day, do something in English every day. And most importantly, watch this channel weekly. Don't forget to subscribe. And subscribe to my Instagram, Lingua Marina. I post a lot of stuff there daily. Stories from Miami, stories from California. 
See you there and see you soon. Bye.